Let's give the Lord a praise offering. Let's do our God it's over here. Let's give the Lord a praise offering. Amen. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 Thank and we praise your holy name, Father God Almighty. We thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Set the atmosphere, Father God. Hallelujah. Set the atmosphere within our homes, dear Father God, in our temple, dear Lord. Set the atmosphere with praise as we worship God and we magnify his name and we remember that he is the Lord God Almighty. He is a creator of heaven and earth and all things thereof. And I thank and I praise your holy name. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I welcome everyone. Hallelujah. On this evening, thank you for coming to Wednesday Bible study. Thank you, everyone who had to press forward, press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. You press through any circumstances. You press through whatever the situation you may have been going through at, on this day, whatever you may be going through within your body, your mind, whatever the situation may be in your home, your family, you still pressed, you pressed forward to come here and to sit at Jesus' feet, to hear the word of God so that you can be strengthened by his word and encouraged by his word. And I don't take that lightly. And I know that the Lord does not take that lightly. That means a lot. It means a lot to our pastor. It means a lot to us as a group coming together to encourage one another in God's word. Now, I see a lot of faces here. I see a lot of squares. Whenever you all get a chance, all those that are able, whenever you get a chance, praise God. I'd love to see your beautiful faces, amen, so that we can stay attentive to God's word on this, this evening. See, now I'm getting ready to do one of those movements. Hold on a second. I dropped something. <laughs> see, it's mostly me, right? It's mostly me. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. So I'm going to open up in a word of prayer, um, and we're going to be uh, encouraged by God's word on today. Amen. Uh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank and we praise your holy name. Your word shall not go out void. It shall accomplish that for what you have sent it forth to do. And I thank you, dear Lord, for your word. I thank you for the encouragement, the leading, and the guiding of, into all righteousness that you have done within us through your word and through the presence of the Holy Spirit. I thank and I praise your holy name, dear Father. I can't do any of this alone. I need you. I need you. I need you. Let your anointing go forward, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus and touch each and every person that is here, dear Lord. Take care of each and every circumstance that may be on their mind. All those that are on beds of affliction, Sister Rolene mentioned her family members, dear Father God. In the name of Jesus, we just thank you for your presence, even in the hospice room, dear Lord. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to touch Tina, dear Lord. Touch your children, everyone that is around here, Father God. Anyone else that is here that has somebody that is on their mind, dear Lord. Glory be to God. We know that you are the Lord, Lord of Lords. You are Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end. And we thank you for being in our lives. We thank you for considering us to be children of yours. What a privilege it is to be a child of the most high God. Our confidence is in you, dear Lord. So we thank and we praise your holy name for taking care of all circumstances. In Jesus' name, we do pray. And let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you. We have, um, I have a few things here. Oh, glory be to God. Our theme for 2023, we will go over that again. Amen. It is Psalms 27, 13 through 14. Whoever doesn't know that should take note of that, write that down so that we can get that in our spirit, whether we're talking about it in Bible study or just uh, so that we are aware of what we will be discussing during the year of 2023. Praise God that we should be all on one mind. <clears throat> and I'm reading from the bulletin that we have here, Psalms, 20, um, Psalms 27, 13 through 14. Praise God. Psalms 27, 13 through 14. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Praise God. That is our theme scripture. And within that, praise God, we have uh, these words to be confident, 
expect, look for, and hope in God. Amen. No matter what the circumstances may be, we must be confident that we are the children of the most high God. We must expect good things because all good things come from God. Hallelujah. We must look for, look for the future, the vision, whatever it is that God has placed on your heart, look for and hope in God. Amen. Glory be to God. And as we were fellowshipping before the serve, before Bible study started today, it was just kind of like encouraging my heart that as the word of God comes forth and and you wonder, Lord, am I on the right track? Um, what I am hearing is that from time to time, we're all going through something. Some of us are going through things now. Some people know about, some people don't know about, some uh, are going through things within their home because we know many are uh, the afflictions of the righteous. So one way or another, whether it's physically within ourselves or family mem members, we know that God is going to deliver us from them. So I wanted to go over the, um, today um, to encourage us to be confident in God's, in God's promises, in God's word. And this is going to be a scriptural Bible study today because nothing is more important than knowing God's word and in being encouraged to be encouraged by God's word. Sometimes we read the word, we may have heard it a while ago, um, and we need to have it refreshed in our memory. Um, sometimes we don't have time to sit down and read a whole chapter or a verse or whatever. We may be able to do a verse and we lose some of the things that are going on before and after the verse that we have, amen, have read. So I am going to um, go over some things with you as far as having our confidence in God, understanding who we are in God, praise God. We are the chosen. And I want to go over, and if you have your Bibles with you, um, the first scripture I'm going to go over and read with you as an opening is a salutation that Paul has to this, the, um, my first one is going to be Ephesians. So the salutation that uh, Paul has to Ephesus, the church. And I want to read this to you, and I hope that you have an attentive ear and uh, try not to be distracted as I read this, uh, because it's a salutation that Paul is speaking amongst uh, to the church. And I'm speaking that as well. We have to put ourselves in place of um, uh, Ephesus when he's speaking to them as if the Lord is speaking to us. And it begins, Paul, this is Ephesians 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saint with, saints, which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. That is us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Those who believe and trust in Jesus Christ. Grace be to you in peace for God, our father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be whole holy and without blame before him in love. Pastor preached about this uh, a couple of Sundays again, praise God, and we're called before the foundations of the world, amen? Having predestined us into unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, that's the adoption is talking about the Gentiles being adopted in, adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein we, he has made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, glory be to God, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he has abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, and whom also we have obtained in inheritance, glory be to God, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worked all things after the counsel of his own will that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Again, speaking to, to us, those believers. 
in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also, after that ye have believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Y'all should be excited about that. That's a good, that's a good passage right there. I'm going to read it again. 13. In whom you also trusted, whom ye also trusted, that you, after you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that, ye, after that ye believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of our purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, the love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks to you, making mention of you in my prayers. Glory be to God, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Thus is the reason why we hear the word, we speak the word, we read the word of God. God wants us to have the wisdom and knowledge in him. Amen. The God, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fulfilled all in all. Now I'm reading this to you as a salutation, just as Paul is reading as a salutation to the Ephesians, as a reminder of you of who we are in Christ. Uh, amen. Because in order for us to have confidence in the word of God and confidence, we need to know, glory be to God, whom we belong to. And we have to remember the blood of Christ. We have to remember the cross. We have to remember redemption. We must remember salvation. Some pastor uh, has been preaching about um, salvation for the last couple of Sundays and think it not strange that he's thinking about salvation because those who do not know Christ may now come to know Christ. Those who do need, know Christ need to be reminded of how we are connected to Christ. Amen. Because what happens is we get so far in the word, in our walk and doing what we have to do. We tend to tend to forget. This is why when we do communion, we do it in remembrance of him, in remembrance of the cross, in remember of redemption and salvation and remembrance that on the third day he rose again in the remembrance of that he sits on the right hand of father of the father, hallelujah, still making intercessions for us. We do this in remembrance of him. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So that is the reason why I read that and started off with that. We're going to go to, um, here's another thing. Philippians 1, 6. This is going to be uh, one scripture there. Reminding you. <laughs> Philippians 1, 6. Being, being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. God has started a work in you. He has delivered us from many things. We are on a journey in Christ. Hallelujah. The spirit of God, the fruit of the spirit, he is He is. He is. In, uh, is indwelled within us in the teaching of the word of God for there to be a holy change that we can be holy as he is holy. Constantly working towards holiness. And this work that he has started in us, in us, this is a reminder that he is not going to leave us. He is going to fulfill this work that he has started, that a good work 
in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That says until Jesus Christ returns. This work that God has started in you, hallelujah, um, think it not, uh, it is not done in vain. Amen. We are not perfect. We are going to stumble. We do not uh, practice sin. Amen. God is continuing to work things out in our lives. Praise God. So we go through things within our lives. Um, I go through things every day that I have to <coughs> press forward, press forward each day. Glory be to God so that I can continue to do the things that I need to do. All right. I go through things. We all go through things in our body. Uh, a sister was talking about her sinuses, allergies, uh, circumstances that are going around uh, uh, within a, uh, some people have issues with their, their knees, with their, 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 their hearts, whatever the circumstances may be. It should not stop us from believing and expecting and having confidence in God. As a matter of fact, it should draw you even closer to him when you are going through things. Amen. Not cause you to turn away. Glory be to God. <clears throat> so I want to go to Philippians 1, 12. You know, should already be on Philippians. And we're talking about the apostle Paul who was in bonds. Amen. So he's in jail. And, and the reason why I'm mentioning this is because even though we may be going through things we, I laugh right now because something happened yesterday. Even though we go through things within our own life physically and um, maybe, I don't know, externally, there's different things. It doesn't matter. The uh, We're still children of the most high God. We still move forward in Christ. We do all that we can do in Christ and keep our eyes focused on Christ. Amen. So when we go to... Philippians uh, 1, <clears throat> 12 to 18. And we have the apostle Paul who's in jail and he reads that and it reads this way. Um, I'll start off with 11. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness. That's us, the spirit of God, the fruit of um, the spirit, the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me in this particular case, he's in prison, have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. No matter what we go through, God's word shall go forward. Amen. So he's in bonds, but he says it was for the furtherance of the gospel. No matter what the circumstance may have been in, he may have been. We have, um, I'm going to go through a couple of things later on with you. Okay. And then it reads, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. So he's in bonds. I'll read the whole thing and then I'll go back. I told you it's hard to read the word of God and not preach each line. Amen. Praise God. And many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident that in my bonds, are uh, much more bold to speak the word without fear. By some indeed preach, some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. And one preached Christ as contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. So in these particular circumstances, he's saying, you have to think back at the time there, okay? It's a new gospel that is coming forth. You got the apostle Paul who was preaching the word of God, and they arrest him. He's in jail. And what has happened is all the other apostles that are around um, some are preaching the word of God in love because they know him. Others are speaking about Paul 
and being in jail in a way of, uh, uh, what does it say, contention and strife, you know? Oh, yes, we arrested him. He's out here to put it, just, I'm going to put it in context. We arrested him. He's out there speaking about Jesus Christ and, you know, and, and, and going against what they would be saying is going against the law of Moses. Um, so they would speak in strife. They're speaking about what Paul is speaking about, amen? But yet the word of God is, and Paul is telling us they're still speaking about Christ. Now they may be envious in their heart and the way they're speaking, but Paul is in jail, but the word of God is still going forward. It's even going forward for those who don't want him, don't want him preaching, but they have to show an account for what is going on with Paul being in jail. So what Paul is saying is even in the palace, they're speaking about him. The rumors are going out about Paul being in bonds. Amen. So the word of God is still going out because it's speaking about Paul, who is the man of God, who is speaking, who was there and, and in bonds because he's speaking the word of God. So you have the preachers that are out there that are preaching the word who have walked with him, who was able to spread the word of God. And those you have others trying to justify why they have him in bonds, yet be they have to justify and so they have to explain, thus the word of God is still going out. So the word of God is going out and it's going to continue to go out. And Paul is saying, I'm rejoicing. They're still talking about me. They're still talking about Christ. No matter what the circumstances are, he's saying, I'm in bonds, but the word is still going forward. Amen. So no matter what the situation is with us, the reason why I say that, we may have many afflictions of the righteous. Amen. It may bring us to a situation we are aware where we may be in a hospital doing chemo. Glory be to God. But the spirit of God that is with us, within us, and no matter what the circumstances are that are around us, the word of God is still going forward. The word of God is going forth, whether it's your, the people seeing you read the word, amen? The word of God is going forth because you have the peace of God, the love of God, no matter what the circumstances may be. Whether you're in prison, hallelujah, if you know the word of God and the spirit of God is within you and you're dealing with whatever circumstances you're dealing with, the word of God is still being expressed as you say, praise God. As you say, Lord is going to be helping me out of this. God is going to deliver me. The word is still going forth. He's still being mentioned, still being mentioned when you go to uh, 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 events, glory be to God. When you go to different events around your family members and they can see that you are different than everyone else. The word of God is still being preached by your existence there, by your presence there. No matter what the circumstances are, we represent Christ. The spirit of God is within us. So no matter what the circumstances are or where you are, you've got to be confident in Christ and not feel as though you're not doing enough. I'm not saying enough. Your presence is enough at some time. Sometimes saying nothing is saying something, amen? Your presence is enough that you shine differently than the way others do. Glory be to God. So you be confident in Christ, be confident to when, no matter what your bonds are or what your circumstances may be, to know that your confidence is gonna be in Christ, that he is going to deliver you from them and that he is with you while you're in there. So he should encourage you here, here you have, you have Paul who's saying, what are you saying? I will rejoice. I will rejoice at what he's saying. Amen. Some indeed, he says, oh, what then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense, whether the people have good intentions or not, whether in truth, Christ is preached. Amen. So I want you to be encouraged by that as far as um, the word of God goes. If Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. Because God is, God is God. Hallelujah. Isaiah 55. Eight through nine. <laughs> and here's the word of God. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as, as the heavens are high, higher than, than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So praise God. We see things one way 
God sees things a totally different way. Amen. We can never comprehend what God has set up for us for things that are coming and the things that we find ourselves involved in and we find ourselves in. It should not shake our confidence in God. Amen. It should not shake our confidence in him, our confidence in his word. It should not shake no matter what the situation may be because he's always got a plan. God has a plan. Glory be to God. And God's plan is is to uh, for his children glory be to god he's got the promises of god uh yay and amen he has the promises that are ours and we can have confidence that his promises are ours whether we're on this earth or whether we're home to be with the lord glory be to god amen anyone have any questions so far thank you for putting the scriptures in there i appreciate that I don't see anyone with their hand raised. Okay, so then I'm going to go into the scriptures that I have. I wanted to um, kind of prepare you for the scriptures as I as I went forward. I'm sorry, Pastor has a hand okay, raised. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> go I'm ahead, Pastor. Pastor. Uh, I just wanted to share something with uh, Philippians 1, 12 through 18. And uh, it was so powerful because I... I never looked at it uh, in quite this here way uh, until we started reading over it. Uh, we all know that the word of God is multifaceted. You know, there's so many things that, um, you know, uh, can uh, come out of the word of God. Um, you know, God will reveal uh, different things to different people and so forth. But um, I read it, I read down what was on my uh, mind as we was going over it. And what it was, was when you look at those verses of scriptures that you read, uh, I said sometimes, okay, uh, uh, how am I not reading my own writing here? <laughs> All right, so, uh, oh, wait, how did I, I can't see that there, right? Oh, no, 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 I got it. I just messed up on the you there, that's all. Um, so sometimes we are put in positions in life to not only prove us, but to make God bigger in someone else, you know? And uh, so sometimes, you know, we go through certain things in our lives and as we're going through, people are looking at us, you know, and, and, and looking how we're going to respond. And, you know, as you look at that scripture, you see uh, that the people that were looking at uh, Paul, they seen that his imprisonment to the gospel was greater than the imprisonment of any man, okay? So uh, that was a testimony in itself, and it was something to be talked about. It was something to be spread abroad, and, you know, so it really grabbed a hold of the people to see a man of God or even, you know, in our case, a man or woman of God that's going to stand firm, you know, in, in the midst of a difficult situation and still stand firm in God, you know, and to do what God has called us to do. So that's what I, uh, that's what came to mind. You know, sometimes we are put in positions, you know, um, in life uh, to not only prove us, uh, but to make God bigger in someone else, because that's what I see in that scripture. You see, because people suddenly grab the hold of the revelation of a true and living God. That's all. No, that's great. Excellent, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, God's ways, like I say, like it explains, he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not, not your ways is so much higher. And we don't know the situation with each person that we're around. We know what we know about the gospel, but you can come in contact with somebody that you may think may not even know the word of God, but they may be discouraged. They may have known the word, but seem discouraged. And like pastor said, it may make our presence and the spirit of God within us may make God bigger in their lives. Amen. It may remind them of the word of God. It may, may remind them that, you know, uh, don't be discouraged. Don't be in despair. Um, glory be to God. 
that, you know, God is there. I'm praising God, no matter what the circumstances may be that I'm going through. And you can do the same thing. Amen. He's not only here for me, he's here for you. He's here for all of us. All we have to do is believe and accept him and receive him. Glory be to God. And he is faithful and just. If there's something that may have you bound up because you, you're bound up because of sin, Glory be to God. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins if we would just come and repent and ask for forgiveness. So sometimes you see people around you um, as far as spreading the word of God just by your presence or by words that are coming out of your mouth that um, glory be to God, the word of God is being preached and, and taught and seen and praise God. It, it may just be a reminder to somebody as well that God needs to be bigger in their lives because he may have been at one time and those others may just not know him at all, you know? So God's always got some multifaceted thing going on all the time. It's not just all about us, you know? He's the God of the world. and We have to understand the bigness of God, amen? It's not just us. And the plans that he has for us and he's orchestrating is not just to bless me, it's to bless you too, glory be to God. It's to bless others that I may not even know that are connected me. He's a God of blessings, praise the Lord, glory be to God. So we just thank and praise God for that. Praise the Lord. So I just want to encourage you to, to keep your confidence in God no matter what. Uh, we're going. Does anyone else have anything to say before we go to the next scripture? All right, so we're going to turn to Psalms 3. Psalms 3 reads, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Praise God, Selah. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill, Selah. Think about that. I laid me down and slept, and I awakened and the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of 10,000s of people that have set themselves against me around about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. For thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone that has broken the teeth of the un and have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Now this is the psalm of David. Now, David, as we spoke to before, is always into some kind of something. Uh, being the king, there was always wars he was always going up against, but he always knew to go for the Lord, that the, God, the Lord would fight his battles. So he had many enemies coming his way. Our enemies may be different than what David's enemies were. Amen. Those that don't like you just for the fact that you're a Christian. Those who don't like the lifestyle that you live because it reminds them of the lifestyle that they're living is not Christ-like. And sometimes people don't want to be reminded of the lifestyle that they are living if it's a simple lifestyle, which thus is the word of God. If before the law came forth, man was doing whatever he wanted to do. But once God set forth the laws, glory be to God, it shone a light within man to show man how he was not meeting up to God's expectations. Thus, it brought a light to him, to man, to show that he was in sin. Now, sin is done in darkness. People like to try to hide sin. So they don't like their darkness to be shined in a light. So when a Christian comes forth who is full of light, because God is light, Sometimes people just feel conviction automatically with you coming around them because they have darkness and they don't want their darkness to be shown in the light. Amen. So therefore you could have enemies that you don't even realize that you have. They don't like you around. They don't want you around. We don't, you may not even know what's going on in their lives. Praise God. It's just conviction that they feel. So being around the Christian, so, so David may have been going through armies of thousands coming up against him, but we as Christians in today's 
world now, praise God, we have enemies uh, that come up against us. Some we are not even aware of, spiritual warfare. We have people that just don't like us, like I said, just because you're Christian. Amen. Does anyone have any to say, anything to say about that? <laughs> Praise God. Anyone encountering anything? Sister, I don't know, Sister Donna's name is just praising God or Sister Donna is. Sister Donna has a question. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. You know, my computer messed up, so that's why I'm on my telephone. But um, I can relate very much so to what you're saying about um, people that aren't Christ-like or when I was into the drugs and those people that I run into, I still see some people that I used to hang out with. And, and you know, and I just say, you know, hello, God bless you. Oh, they said, oh, you, you're still following Jesus? I say, yeah, I'm going to continue to follow Jesus. <laughs> like there's supposed to be a time limit on it, but go ahead. <laughs> you know, but um, yeah. So we so we can't hear you. We can't hear you. You're coming, Tinny. Oh wait a minute. I'm on my phone. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. I can. Okay, I'm saying that I there's people that I've come across that I used to indulge with the, the, with the drugs and the alcohol and stuff, and now they see me and they you know and I say hello to everybody and I. Say, <laughs> ain't nobody mad but the yeah, devil look again ain't nobody mad but the devil sister. <laughs> every time you she gets to that say. pot sister Don every time you get to that pot as far, as far as you're talking about speaking to those that don't like you all of a sudden we can't hear you well, we're not giving up until we hear that part. <laughs> we, we want to hear it <laughs> no I try to tell them no, I said, don't, don't knock me because the Lord saved my family. I love Jesus. Now I said, if you follow me to church or you want me to pick you up, you, you can experience the same thing, you know, but I'm not going to let people, um, I'm just not going to let the death steal my joy. I just refuse. Exactly. Just Praise the Lord. And that is one of the things that the Lord gives us is that joy and that peace. Amen. But you do see what I'm talking about. You see the difference. You see how people, just because the light that is shining within you, that's it. Just because your lifestyle has changed, that people are going to feel a little funny being around you. And why? Because their deeds are dark. Other than that, they would not need to have any other reason as to why they feel funny being around you. People that are in darkness don't want the light shining around their darkness. And we are light. So we shine light in their darkness and we may not even realize it. It's conviction. Praise God. But thank you, Sister Donna. Anyone else? Pastor. Yeah, I, I wanted to mention uh, to uh, all of uh, Sister Donna. Uh, you know, I remember times that I have, uh, I had witnessed to people, especially when I was newly saved, you know, just on fire, you know, I, in the streets down in South Providence, you know, uh, just witnessing the folks, you know, preaching the gospel. And, um, you know, there was some people that literally said to me, you know, bro, that might work for you, you know, but you know, that, that, that doesn't work for me, you know? Uh, so I, you know, when I, when I think about that, I think that, you know, for the most part, a lot of people um that um uh may not just uh totally want to disregard uh what has happened in our lives uh can't bring themselves to believe that uh by making the same decision that we've made uh that god will do the same thing in their lives you know um so um you know you we, we just have to pray for folks you know pray for our friends and just pray that, you know, um, God will do what he did even in us, all right? Because no man comes to God except the spirit of God draws him. And that's true. It's something that happens on the inside way before it happens on the outside, you know? And there's a tug that happens and that we just uh, pray that people will respond to it, you know? But, you know, sister, I hear you about the friend thing. I had a whole lot of friends. 
<laughs> sometimes my wife, sometimes my wife is playing around me. She tells me, she says, "Man, you ain't got no friends," <laughs> you know. But um, you know, that's just a little, you know, laugh that me and my wife have, you know, stuff when you when we try to look around to see all the friends we used to have, you know, mm -hmm. like when we were out in the world, you know, and and they're just not they're not not, not around anymore. But praise God, I thank God for what he's done in our lives. And I know he's able to do the same thing in theirs. Keep on praising God. Keep on witnessing for him uh, and use words if you have to. Amen. <laughs> thank you, Pastor. I, I think of a song that C.C. Winans used to, uh, well, used to being was popular. And the, the song said, he's not on his knees yet. He's too strong to be weak. You know, and that's what it is. We, we were once at that point and and when we get to a point where we can surrender to god and understand that you know it, it's uh you tried everything else you try them you know sometimes you got to get yourself to a point where pain to stay the way you are is greater than the pain for you to try to change so when it gets to that point then you will surrender to god and say help me help me and sometimes that's all it takes is just say help me lord so that was a song that she's that she used to sing. He's not on his knees yet. And I understand that when I see people that have not come to Christ or run from Christ, I just say he's not on his knees yet. He's too strong to be weak. And we need to recognize the weaknesses within us uh, um, in order to come to, to the Lord because it's a, it's a matter of surrendering, humbling. Amen. Praise God. Um. Anyone else before I go to the next scripture? All right, Psalms 20. Our confidence in God. Psalm 20 reads, the Lord hear thee in thy day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob, defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifices, Selah. Selah. Grant thee according to thy own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners and Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now know. I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save Lord, let the king hear us when we call. The king of kings, the Lord of lords, who are you going to put your trust in? Amen. And, and sometimes we have to be intentional um, as far as trusting and believing in God and keeping our mind focused on him that with intentionality. We have to understand that though I see all these things that are around me, I am intentionally going to trust God and believe God and move forward in Christ. Uh, that's what I'm going to do because, you know, whose report are you going to believe? I choose to believe the report of the Lord. Amen. And sometimes we have to encourage ourselves to remind ourselves that yet we are a child of the most high God. Amen. Glory be to God. Any, any questions or anything on that one? The Psalm of David has a lot of encouraging Psalms in here. Praise the Lord. I am one I'm always talking about. Glory be to God as we're going through. Um, and that's the Psalms 23. I always take the passage number four out of there, but it, we tend to read this Psalm at funerals, but it's not just for funerals. It's a reminder, glory be to God, that uh, even as David was a shepherd over the sheep, he understood that, that uh, leadership of being an uh, overseer of the sheep. Amen. So he starts off with, the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. You see that it, how he, he grafted and transitioned that he used to be the shepherd over the sheep and he is recognizing the Lord God. The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. 
I shall not want, just as a sheep would not want, because the shepherd, as David was a shepherd over the sheep, and he had to lead and guide them into every everywhere that they went, because sheep were dumb. And we, and and cross referencing, we can be dumb in making dumb decisions. We could we could choose um, uh, to satisfy ourselves and not the Lord. Um, uh, just different ways that we think that we can just be ignorant to certain things if we did not have the Lord. And I'm not talking, I'm not talking about education wise. I'm just talking about the uh, sinful nature that tends to get us into things that we don't need to get into. So I shall not want, he says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Amen. A green pastures is a place of, of food, of, of peace. Glory be to God. He leadeth me besides the still waters. It's a place we're going to drink, thinking again, the shepherd and the sheep. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Thank you, Jesus. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Again, thinking about a shepherd and the sheep. And, I, and I'm always speaking about four. Uh, uh, the, the fourth passage here is because, yea, though I walk through, in order for us to walk through something, whether we're walking through a cave, a tunnel, walking through your house from one room to the other, you, there's a time where you're in that room. There's a time when you're in that tunnel. There's a time when you're in the in before you can walk through something. You have there's a there's a a, a time when you're actually in it. Glory be to God as you're walking through it. And when we're in it, no matter what the circumstances may be, whether it's our health wise, whether it's school, whether it's circumstances, whatever, none of us like to be in it. Well, none of us like to be in an in, uh, in affliction, no matter what the affliction may be. But we have the confidence in God that he's telling us that though I walk through, you're coming out of it. But there's going to be a time, because it's a season for everything, there's going to be a time that you're going to be in it. But know and have your confidence in God and keep your eyes focused on him to know that he is bringing you out of it. My, We was talking to Sister Rawlene just um, before services. She didn't feel good for a couple of days. Amen. And I said, how do you feel now? She said, I feel good now. All right. You didn't like it when you were in it, did you? No, you didn't. You didn't like it when you were in it. And we're always in it in order to get through it. So I hope you understand. I, I'm pretty sure you all understand that. That there's always going to be that time that we're walking through. Amen. So thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to God. As we keep our eyes focused on the Lord and we stay humble and allow him to be our shepherd and allow him to lead and guide us into our righteousness, glory be to God. We can't go wrong, but we are going to go through. Amen. And God's word is true. So he's trying to let us know that this is not always going to be tiptoed through the tulips. And everything that we do here, there are going to be times that you're going to go through, but praise the Lord. As Paul, as Apostle Paul says, even in his bonds, glory be to God. He rejoiced. He rejoiced. Amen. This is our confidence in Christ. Anyone have anything to say? Um, we want to add anything to that. Feel free. Praise God, people. Oh, good friend. Good friend. Um, I think, Pastor, do you have something you want to say? Okay. I do. Um, Sister Rochelle does. Hey, Shelly. Hi. I, I just want to, maybe you can tell me why people um, choose this at funerals. I, I just, I don't understand the reasoning behind it. I, you know, I read it. And I think that you're talking about the person who has passed. So why do you think people use it at, at funerals? Well, apply it to the people that are still here. Okay. Okay. All right. And the people who are, who are mourning at that particular time and feeling as though everything is so devastating that they can't get over this loss. 
And sometimes our people are just at that state of mind because they're in that state of mind because they just lost someone. And you have the assurance of God that I'm going to bring you through this. Amen. So that's another way of looking at that. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Because I, I just couldn't saying, understand. Why yeah, do they I, do it at funerals? I, I get you. I, I, I totally get what you're saying there. And I believe that is basically, that's a scripture that is usually, they keep using it for funerals. Yes. Um, uh, but it may be basically for those that are still living and still going through. Pastor, did you want to add anything to that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there's two parts to that scripture. It speaks about a life here, and it speaks about a life after, okay? Because it talks about the provisions of God and, and uh, you know, God's uh, watchfulness over us while we're here. And then if you, re if you recall, the psalm ends by saying, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, okay? So, um it speaks about the trust that we had in the Lord while we were here and the promise that we receive as we leave here. So um, I'm looking at it from that uh, area there where that may be possibly by why it's used at funerals a lot. Um, so um, I don't know if that helps you any. Yeah, it does. It does because I'm not even sure. I can't remember if I used it at my mom's funeral, um, but I can remember hearing it at just about every funeral I went to. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I, I thought it was about the person that passed to let those in, um, in the audience know that they were okay. They were going to be okay. They were with Jesus. Mm -hmm. that, okay. That's a, another way of looking at it too. Yeah. Um, because when the scripture also speaks about, I shall not want, uh, what more can you want than being in the presence of the Lord as the Psalm ends and says that I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Mm -hmm. and, and sister Shelley, just also, if you take that fourth multifaceted God's word is okay. You take the, uh, the fourth, um, verse there. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and when they're saying that at the funeral, the person also who was passed away, who's walking through the valley of the shadow of death, it's a way of saying, I will fear no evil. They know the Lord, they will fear no evil. Um, for thou art with me, the rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That's a way of transitioning as well. That as I say, you know, as I walk through the valley, that valley of death. I will fear no evil because you're with me. And so that's come sometimes also that's an assurance to the people that are still here that the person who died as well is with Christ as they move through that valley, he is with them, with them. But then also because it always seems to be that number four that really um, stands out in that scripture to me um, that the people that are, like I said, on a flip side, the people that are still here, they are going to be going through. God is with you. The person who passed away, God is with them within that transition as well. I think maybe that's another reason why they always do the scripture. Personally, I think I would have liked the fact that the scripture that says many mansions, um, uh, my father has many mansions. If I would not have told you so, if it was not so, I would pr probably want that, that know that the person is in a better place at this point, praise the Lord, that, you know, God has prepared a place for them. Glory be to God. But yes, everyone does gravitate towards this particular one when it really talks about humility and trusting in God as a, a shepherd overseeing his flock. The Lord is my shepherd. So he's overseeing, he's overseeing us just as David was a shepherd glory be to God overseeing his flock. So I hope that's encouraging to you um, in one way or another, or whatever, whichever way to, during the circumstances of how God reveals it to you during that particular time and how you can apply it to your life. But uh, either way, while you're going through, whether it's through death or through mourning of a death or through circumstances in life, Glory be to God. Know that God is with you as you go through. 
Thank you both. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone else? All right, our confidence in God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. I was turning pages over here as you were talking, which is one of the reasons why I asked you to talk so I can turn my pages. <laughs> Psalms 27. Glory be to God. As I said, the book of Psalms has a lot of encouragement. Praise God. David sustains his faith in the power of God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, my enemies and my foes came up against me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the times of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now all my head be lifted up upon my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer to his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou sayest, seek my face, my heart saith unto thee, thy face, Lord, I will seek. Hide not thy face far from me, but put not thy, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God, of my salvation. Let's look at David crying out to him, amen? When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Deliver me unto over, deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies, for fault witnesses are rising up against me. And such as breathe out cruelty, I have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. What I like is not only the scriptures that we chose, 13 and 14, but in here, what I like is when I go into 11, teach me thy way. That's what it is. Lead me in a plain path, deliver me, those three, teach me, lead me, deliver me, that is my prayer to the Lord, teach me your ways, dear Father God, lead me in the path of righteousness, lead me, glory be to God, and deliver me, glory be to God, not over to the will of thy enemies, Deliver me, deliver me from whatever it is that may be going on within me that is not pleasing unto you, dear Lord. Teach me thy ways. Lead me in the path of light, righteousness and deliver me, dear Father God. That is a prayer that I think that all of us should always have on our mind when we come before the Lord and we're seeking help from God. These are the things that we are seeking help from. For that we will need him to lead us and guide us into all righteousness, deliver us from whatever the situation may be. Anyone have anything to add to that? I don't see anyone else, friend. All right. I told you this would be a scriptural service, uh, service, Bible study, because God's word is rich and God's word needs to be reminded within us. Amen. Psalms 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Thank you, Jesus. I love that scripture because having confidence in him, praise God. 
it, it says it all on its, on its own. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea? Though the waters therefore roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake and the swelling thereof see love. There is a river, the stream, whereof shall make glad the city of, of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolation he has made in the earth. He maketh war to cease until the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear of sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is, the, is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Amen. Praise God. That is another scripture of confidence, which the church has in God. Amen. That he is our refuge. He is our strength, our very present help and trouble. Praise God. As you, as you uh, write these scriptures down and go over them, um, again, apply them to yourself. Um, David may have written them, but apply them to yourself in your life. Glory be to God. Do we have time for, time for a, a couple of more? That was 46. I have Isaiah 12. Oh, Lord, send your spirit down. I was at work today started singing that song. Send your spirit down. I can't do nothing until you send your spirit down. You all remember that one? Isaiah 12. Why are you looking for that scripture? I used to have some, I have a question. Sure, go ahead. So, when you say apply the scripture to your lives, mm -hmm. how exactly does one do so? The Lord is my strength and my salvation and whom shall I fear? You, It's confidence in him. It's believing in him that the Lord is the, he is my strength. He is my refuge. Glory be to God. So yes, applying it to your, your life, not worrying about what the world says, not worrying about the circumstances outside of you, keeping your eyes focused on him. Yes, there's things that you need to do physically. We don't just sit around and say, okay, God is going to handle it and take care of it. There's our part and there's God's part. Glory be to God. But it's applying it to yourself into your life in the confidence and the trust that you have in him. That when you do what you do and when you talk what you talk and the places that you go and the things that you do, you have him in mind. You go to him in prayer. You ask him, you, you ask him again, lead, guide, and direct and deliver. Praise God. So you're applying his life, his word to your life. Glory be to God. So you stay lined up with the holiness of Christ. Um, you, you stay lined up with his direction for your life and not in the choices that you make are not the choices that are going to take you away from him. So applying it to your life is submitting yourself to the Lord, submitting yourself to his ways, submitting yourself to the things that he would have you to do. So therefore you are applying it to your life. I think that's a, I think that's one of those uh, questions that you asked that you already knew the answer, but you like to throw out there, right? Sister Mama. Correct. But I, you know, sometimes because we, we, we been in this, in this sort of a lifestyle for a while, I think uh -huh. sometimes it be, we say all these words and they sound really great. 
but how do you actually give people the nuts and bolts to actually do this thing on the daily basis? And that's what I was getting at. Yeah. because you know you, you just said it like you know apply it right it was like, okay great that sounds really good and I totally get it right yeah. but that's because I've been around for a while uh -huh. but how do you apply uh -huh. something that seems so abstract yeah I guess you have to look at the circumstances first of all that you're dealing with and putting God first putting him first and foremost as far as whatever the situation is and the decisions that you make so you're applying it to your life because you're putting him first before you for any of uh, the decisions that you make in life and how you move forward in life. It's just a matter of applying it, putting God first. Does anyone not understand that or is, does anyone have a question about that? No, we understand. Sister Rolene had to leave her sister Tina passed. Oh, OK. We were talking about oh, she Tina at the study. beginning. Okay, and it's 817. Okay, okay. Praise God. So you keep Sister Rolene. Um, this is uh, one of her uh, relatives that lives. Her sister-in-law. Um, her sister-in-law that lives out of state. Yes. Uh, her name is Tina. She had been battling um, cancer for a while. And I guess it returned. And then she received, she got COVID. So it made things even worse. So they just recently brought her to, um, uh, what do you call that? The hospice 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 they brought it to hospice and so rolling let us know so she uh, um she's letting us know that she just passed so please keep sister rolling's family up in prayer and tina's family in prayer if you can please so rolling has already left Praise yes God. yes okay all right so we'll go over one um more scripture here i think i even said this one before just in talking Praise God. So we'll go to Isaiah. Where are we? Isaiah 12? Yes. Okay. Isaiah 12, 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid of the Lord. Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall you, shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. May the Lord as a, add a blessing to the reading of his word. It's a matter of trusting him and putting him first and doing things the way that the Lord would have us to do them and not choosing to do things the way we would want to. And that's a that's that's a, a learning. That's a, a that doesn't come overnight. I mean, that's learning. That's disciplining your uh, disciplining your life and disciplining your walk with Christ to trust in him because we can trust him in some areas and not trust him in other areas. And it's not that he's not there in those areas. It's just that we're more prone to taking control of those areas instead of trusting and relying on God. But God wants us to rely on him and, and all things that, uh, that we do concerning our lives, amen? Because if he's gonna be the shepherd of our life, glory be to God, then he's going to be there to lead and guide us into our righteousness. So therefore, we have to surrender ourselves and submit ourselves, yet have confidence in the one that is leading us to know that he loves us, that he's not going to forsake us, he's not going to leave us, and he is always there with us. Glory be to God. So um, it is 820. Does anyone have any questions? Because that is my last scripture I'm going to go over today before we go into the next subject, which will be next week. And um, again, what I, I am working on is being confident, expect, look for, and hope in God. And we just went over confident, having confidence in God. Nope. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sister Mavi is still there? Oh, I see you. Yeah, I didn't go away yet. Uh, <laughs> your, your square moved. So that's why when I put my eyes towards where you were and I'm like, oh, you're still there? <laughs> 